So, hello, welcome to WordCamp Boston. Uh, my name is Dustin Mesa. I, uh, this is my second year in a row speaking at WordCamp Boston. It's awesome. This is one of the best WordCamps. I love it here. Um, obviously, this city is really cool too. Last year, I was speaking out there in that huge room. That was pretty. That was something else. Um, I like this room better. I like everybody just nice and tight, and everybody I can see them. Um, I walk around a lot, so you probably don't want to follow my face. Maybe more follow the slides, but yeah. So yeah, we're here to talk about WordPress upgrades. Um, experience from over two million WordPress upgrades. You can follow me on Twitter, at Dustin Mesa, so just my full name. Um, there's a lot of great information in these slides, including step-by-step -step kind of processes. Uh, instead of having to scribble them all down and everything, I will tweet a link to the slides uh, later today. So if you don't want to mad scribble all your notes or take pictures every time I change the slide, um, you can just get them later today. Cool. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm the Director of Customer Experience Operations at WP Engine. Uh, I've been there three and a half years. Before that, I was the Senior Manager of Cloud Operations at Rackspace, so I've been in uh, the kind of hosting role for eight years. And I got my MBA in Business Management from UTSA, University of Texas, San Antonio. Go Roadrunners. Um, and that applies like not at all to what I do today. But yeah, fun. Cool. Um, so first, let me tell you why you should listen to me. I'm going I'm to get up here, I'm going to tell you a lot of cool things, and you know, you can agree with them or not, um, but I'm going to show you why you should. So first of all, um, me and my team, we own the entire WordPress upgrade process at WP Engine. So we upgrade every single site we have multiple times a year. Uh, I've been upgrading WordPress since version 3.5. For some of you, that's not a long time at all. But for others, that might be a very long time. Um, so that's cool. Um, I've handled every WordPress upgrade deferral request for two plus years. And so what that means is at WP Engine, um, we used to have it that if you weren't going to upgrade your WordPress site, you had to request a deferral um, by talking to me, me specifically. And so with that, I've heard thousands of reasons and looked at thousands of sites for why people don't want to upgrade their WordPress version. Um, and yeah, that, there's a lot of learnings from those here. Um, and at WP Engine, we've performed over 2 million upgrades just since I've owned it. We've probably done 5 total million, but um, yeah, over 2 million upgrades. We're probably close to 3 million, too. So yeah, we've been doing, we've done a lot. We've done a lot of upgrades. Uh, quick disclaimer. So my advice is based on my experience and what I've seen work for our customers. Now, 2 million upgrades, it's probably uh, everybody. Um, I think I've probably seen every kind of site and every kind of problem. Um, every site's unique, though. Every site is different. Uh, there's most likely an exception to every rule I put up here, but most likely you are not that exception. So you didn't win the lottery. Uh, and you will need to dedicate some time to this, but it is well worth it. And don't worry, I will explain why. So just to start off real quick, this is the 2015 WordPress Security Learning Center um, survey, where they survey WordPress professionals and talk to them about uh, what they do to keep their site secure. And the number one answer, is keep WordPress up to date. And that's because WordPress core, the core software, is very secure. Very, very, very secure. What makes your site insecure is when you don't perform your upgrades or you add code like plugins and those that code is insecure. But it's, it's very important to remember the WordPress core version is very secure. So, talking about upgrades, Let's hear a little bit about what people are saying. Um, so I hear there are so many updates I can't keep up. Okay, that's fair. There's you know there's one a quarter, um, and then if you throw in security and maintenance updates, maybe there's three a quarter. So that that's a lot for someone who's you know not, their job isn't to WordPress upgrade. Um, okay, uh, WordPress upgrades always break my sites. This is a great one. Um, when people tell me this, it means that they are absolutely doing something wrong inside of WordPress. And usually, they've modified the core files, and they get it overwritten every time. Modifying the core is a big no-no. We don't do that for, one, this specific reason, but two, because the WordPress core version is very secure. But if we go mucking it up, we can make it insecure. How can I ever know what an update will do to my site? Okay, very, hey, that's, that's fair. Um, you know, who's got time to, to read about every single thing that the update's gonna do? Not a lot of people, um, but I'm gonna help you with that, don't worry. I don't need the upgrade because my site just works. I love this one, and I usually tell my mechanic, I don't need to change my OO because my car just runs, right? 
It's the same thing. It's no problem. I don't, I don't need it. We don't need to do these things. Uh, that's not true. And then, and this is my absolute favorite. I always stay one version behind so they can work out the bugs. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That is, that's fancy. I don't, I, I refuse to upgrade to the version that has all the bug fixes so they can work the bugs out. Like, I just don't, that one's a, a tough one for me to swallow. I, when I get that one, I always have to take a breath and reset. <laughs> um, but what does all this do? Well, it gives you button anxiety. This makes you nervous. You don't want to press that button. You don't want to change your site in ways that you don't know, right? You don't want to break your site. Of course not. And this button anxiety is a very real thing. I've talked to a lot of people. I've spoken, you know, like I said, I handled upgrade deferrals for a long time. Um, one time, this guy called. And he called me, and we were, we were talking about his site and why he couldn't upgrade. And I wasn't hearing any legitimate reasons why he couldn't upgrade. And so I'm telling him, you know, hey, I don't, you know, I don't think a deferral is appropriate here. And he starts crying. And he starts crying. And he's like, my site's going to break. You know, I, I can't handle this. And so I ended up giving him the deferral. I'm a sucker for anybody that cries. Um, but uh, when I hung up the phone, I said something to myself. I said, something's, gotta, something's going on here. Something, I'm not getting something. Because if someone is so upset that they are calling me crying, and I'm still just kind of like very uh, matter of fact about it, I, I'm missing something. There is something that I am missing. And so I went ahead and kind of just started thinking. I, I started just like trying to back away. So I never used WordPress before I started with WP Engine. So I was never a WordPress user before I became like a WordPress uh, I don't know, guru, whatever. Um, so I kind of said, okay, well, what if I had a site? Like, what if I built a site? What if I had a business that had a site on WordPress? And I really put myself in our customer's shoes, and I really thought about, you know, why would somebody cry over this? And, and, and eventually I got there. It made sense. They're doing it because this is their livelihood, right? Their site might be their only source of income. It might be the only way they put food on the table. And of course you're going to cry. If someone's sitting here telling you, I'm going to break your only source of income, I'm going to break the only way you put food on the table for your family, of course, I'd cry too. If I lost my job tomorrow, I'd cry. Absolutely. And so, you know, I, I was like, wow, I understand. And then I, I kept thinking, you know, I was like, you know, if, if, if it's a new, uh, if it's like a new business and a new site, there's probably a lot to get done around that business. You know, they might want to market to their customers. Who wants to spend two hours upgrading WordPress when they could be finding new clients, making their product better? Like, of, of course, of course people get frustrated and don't want to do this. Of course they have all these excuses. And so I said, you know what? Uh, as, as one of the kind of experts in the community on WordPress upgrades, I'm going to do something about it. Um, and so I, I really looked inside, and, and I'll tell you, this, this quote really sums up kind of what I, what I surmised. For every external struggle, there is an internal struggle. Look inside first. And sure enough, right? You want to make your business better. You don't want to upgrade WordPress, right? You don't, you don't want to put your site at risk when it's the only you know, source of income. Um, and these images just, they totally resonate with me and, and what our customers and what people upgrading WordPress can go through. And I said, I've got to stop that. I've got to make this better for people because WordPress needs to stay up to date, to stay secure, right? And, and I don't want this to be a huge battle every time. You know, oh, WordPress is upgrading. I don't want to do it. I don't, I don't, no, I'm going to fix it for us. So to start, I'm going to educate everybody on what is an upgrade. Kind of like, uh, you know, how does a bill become a law? We're going to do it kind of like that. So first of all, there's three kinds of upgrades. The first kind is a feature or functional upgrade. And you know it's a feature or functional upgrade because the first number in the version or the second number in the version are going to change. So we go from 4 to 5, or we go from 4.3 to 4.4, right? And these are the ones, these are the scary ones, right? Now, a lot of people think that they're all scary, but really, these are the ones we have to worry about. Because these are the ones that add functionality changes. Things go away, things get built in, things change, you know, all of that. So these are the ones that add functionality. Next, you've got a maintenance upgrade. These are great. These are the ones that just fix bugs, right? This is an upgrade that fixes bugs. It truly doesn't add or remove features or functionality. It just fixes things. It makes things faster. It makes things better. These are wonderful. I love maintenance upgrades. When I see WordPress is going to do a maintenance upgrade, I know my site's just about to get better in some way, shape, or form. 
no risk of, of, um, of like breaking your site as long as you're on the, the latest version, right? So it pays to stay up to date because you get these maintenance upgrades for free, no risk. Same vein here, security upgrades. These are upgrades that close security vulnerabilities. They do not add or remove functionality unless the functionality is the insecure part. So WordPress has done a lot of security upgrades. Um, only once have I ever seen them actually remove a function because they just couldn't patch it. They just couldn't make it good. And so they removed it flat out. But every other time they've ever done one, they're patching the vulnerability. So your site's not at risk. It's fine. You're just going to get more secure. That's excellent, right? So number two and number three, maintenance and security upgrades. Those are our friends. We love those. You should run home and push the button when you see one of those come out. And then the feature and functional upgrades, those are the ones we've got to respect. We've got you know, to figure out what we're going to do and plan for it. So how does an upgrade happen, right? So you've got core contributors. And you've got the community, and they kind of sit down and they say, what do we want WordPress to do? What new things should we do? What should we make better? You know, what, what should we keep on the cutting edge? And, and they kind of plan that out, and then those core contributors go to work, and they, uh, they code, and then they create a beta. And they might create one, two, three, they might create a lot of betas, um, but, you know, they keep, they keep coding and everything. And, and then they say, uh, they take the beta, and they, they say to the community, hey, test it. Everybody test it, you know, take a look at the code whatever, and then they get bug reports, and so they fix those. And once they go through that process enough times, they come out with a release candidate. And when you have a release candidate, that's WordPress basically saying, hey, we think we're done. And if we don't see anything glaring come about in the next two weeks, this bad boy's going to become an upgrade. Um, so your release candidate is what you really want to pay attention to. That's where your plugin and your theme developers go and test. Um, so we do all that, and then eventually we get the real upgrade. So there's, there's kind of your upgrade one-on-one, so we're all on the same page. Um, now, why do we upgrade? It's, it's for maintenance, right? We, we've got a maintenance. I, I said the joke about the oil in my car, right? Um, how, many, how many people in the audience own a house? Show of hands real quick. Cool. Good, good amount. Um, would you ever let your house become like that? I mean, would you ever have a leaky faucet and just let it run? No big deal. It'll just warp the wood, right? Yeah, we'll just put a hole in the roof, leave it. No problem. No, of course not. This is, this is our shelter, right? This is what we, we trust to, you know, keep our family safe. You know, shoot, we, we put three locks on doors. Um, you know, we fix our houses. We do a lot to them, but we don't care about our sites, right? We're doing the same thing. Um, I love this. So what if your car broke down, right? Just on the side of the road, you're driving over to New York, your car breaks down, and you just leave it. You're just like, yeah, I'm not going to fix it. And, and you're talking to a buddy, and he's like, hey, man, do you have a car? And it's like, yeah, I do. Can I borrow it? Of course you can. It's over there off, you know, the 212. Um, it's about, you know, exit four. And you know, it doesn't do much, but you can sit in it and, you know, you can look at it. and I, You can push it if you wanted to. Like, that's ridiculous. Somebody would look at us like we are crazy if we acted like that about our car. But we act like that about our websites. Who's got that uh, uncle who refuses to, like, upgrade their computer or even just use dust cleaner, you know? Uh, real quick, I was that guy in college because uh, Intel decided that it was a good idea to put the Pentium 3 into a laptop. Um, and really, that thing is way too hot. And so I literally, if I wanted to work on my laptop, I would have to sit down on a chair, then put a box fan on top of my lap, turn it on, then put my laptop on top of that. If I didn't do that, it would overheat and turn off. Um, so I'm guilty too. And then, uh, I'm sorry if you own a boat. But if you own a boat, and you got a hole, and it sunk like this, and it was half out. And uh, your buddy was like, hey, man, you want to go fishing? You're like, absolutely. I own a boat. we got to take another boat to get to it, but no big deal. Once we get there, it's perfect. It's the same fishing spot, and we can sit on it and, like, cast out. Yeah, i got a boat. Like, no, you get the point, right? We, we don't let this happen to our things in real life, but we let it, we let it happen to our websites. Now, if you do all of this, what are you going to get? Come on, Dustin, what happens? If I do all of this, if I, you know, I've, I've listened to you and I do this, what am I going to get? Well, you're going to get a well-oiled machine. You're going to get more horsepower. It's going to be fast, right? It's going to be the fastest it can be because WordPress is up to date. You're going to get perfect tuning. It's going to be efficient because all the bugs are fixed. Don't hang back one version and leave those bugs there. Go, go get that maintenance upgraded and make sure you don't have any bugs so things just work. All the options. WordPress is building new things every day. I remember once. 
somebody called in to support, and they were like, like how do I add a menu? They were like, oh, you just do this, and you go here. And they were like, well, I don't have this. I don't have, like, I can, you say go here, but I don't have it. And so we went into their site, and they were running, like, the version before menus were just there, just, just there. And I was like, oh, my gosh, no way. Like, what are you doing? Like, listen, we all don't ride around in Model Ts without air conditioning just because we don't want to upgrade our cars. Like, we want the new stuff, right? And then, even better, you got that fancy car alarm, right? When someone even looks at it, it's like, boop, boop. Um, it's a secure WordPress core, one of the most secure pieces of software in the world. It's bad plugins, bad themes, and out-of-date software and code that make WordPress insecure, not the core code. All right. Hopefully now I've sold you on why this is a great idea. I've made everybody laugh. And it's like, well, I'd never let my boat do that, right? But Dustin, how? It's not that easy. You just, you know, you just said a bunch of cool words and you know made us laugh, um, and, and that's exactly right. So we're gonna we're gonna start. It's a five-step process, and this is where it's where the magic happens. This is how you are going to make your site secure. Someone's taking a picture, so I'm gonna flex real quick. <laughs> Love it. Um, all right. So step one. Get to know your site. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by cataloging our plugins. Take your favorite uh, kind of Excel or Google Sheets or OpenOffice, whatever you like for spreadsheets, take that. And you can actually go to the plugin page in WP Admin and you can just copy and paste right into Excel and it will drop all your plugins into different cells. You'll have to delete like the description and stuff, but no big deal. You know, it's faster than like having two screens and just looking and typing. Um, so catalog your plugins, put them in there, right? So list them out and then rank them, high, medium, or low, in respect to the criticality of your site. So what I mean is, if this plugin stopped working, what would happen to my site? So if the, uh, you know, I guess if my, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a really basic plugin. Uh, retina, if my retina plugin stopped working, my site works perfectly fine. People don't see a retina image on their Mac, but oh well, they can literally still do everything with my site. So that would be a low criticality plugin. Now, if you're running, uh, if you run a store and you sell stuff on your site and you have WooCommerce, well, that would be a high critical plugin, right? If WooCommerce stopped working, well, then you literally can't make money, and so that is the highest of the high, right? If you're a nonprofit and you get uh, lead captures from your contact form, and that's your main way of getting sponsorships and things. Well, guess what? Then Gravity Forms is a high critical plugin because if it didn't work, I mean, your site's basically not doing its job. All right? So you're going to rank them. And be very honest with yourself. If you rank everything a high, you're just making more work for yourself that's not going to pay off in the end. Be brutally honest with, what if this wasn't here? Place a few sentences of uh, front end, kind of notes on front end functionality. So, like, what do we use it for? What do we use Gravity Forms for? Well, we use it to, you know, to get leads for our, for our nonprofit. Um, you know, what do we use this for? So just a couple, just a few sentences on what it does, right? Why you have it on your site. And then provide exact instructions for how to reproduce that functionality. And we'll do all these real quick on my site now. Oh, fun, fun story. So this is my wedding website that uh, I built a couple years ago for my wedding. And, uh, you know, that was like my only job for the wedding. Uh, my wife was like, yeah, we, want, we knew we wanted a site for all the information and where we take our RSVPs. And, and I told her, I was like, hey, I work for WP Engine, like, I, I'll make that site, right? That's my job. And she happily did everything else. It's happily to me, too. Um, and so, you know, it's a WordPress site. I can stand it up in a weekend. So I put it off. Put it off. She asked. She asked. I said, oh, anyway, I'm busy at work. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. One day I come home and she goes, hey, I built the wedding site. And I was like, what? Well, that's my job. I was like, show it to me. She pulls it up. And I go, how did you build this? I'll give you one guess on what she used to build it. Squarespace? Wix. Yeah. And I go, she, she told me Wix, and I just like fell to the floor, and I was like, listen, I'm gonna get laughed out of my company if we put this, if this is the site they go to, I'm done. I was like, yeah, we just kissed goodbye. And she was like, I mean, I asked you, and I was like, I'm gonna build it today. Don't worry. I was like, listen, let's sit down and look at themes. Which wedding theme do you want? And it, it, it downs on me now. She did that to make me build it. Like, she, she had no intentions of it. She's just, and that affirmed that I'm marrying the right person. Like, outsmart me? I love it. Yes, we're, we're done. Um, 
So cool. So here's my wedding site. We're going to run through it real quick, and we're going to do exactly what I just showed you in step one. So the first one, this is a kismet. You'll notice that it's disabled. Now, I said exception to every rule. My rule is don't ever keep a plugin that's disabled because all you're doing is keeping code that could become vulnerable that someone can exploit for no value. You're literally getting zero value from a plugin that's disabled, right? Plugins aren't like Pokemon, guys. You do not want to catch them all, right? <laughs> so now, Kismet is different because it's, it's maintained by WordPress. And so I trust it. I know Kismet will always, I keep it up to date. When there's an upgrade, I still upgrade it, just in case I want to turn you know, comments on or whatever. So anyways, nothing to do with Kismet because I don't have it on the site, so I don't even need to cut power. Contact Form 7. Okay, this is just a contact form uh, that we used so our friends and family could ask us questions. Um, so I write Contact Form 7. Uh, I'm going to call it... I'm going to call it low because really my friends and family know me. They can call me. They can email me. I, they don't need a contact form on my website to ask me like, hey, which hotel's better? Um, you know, so I'm going to call it low. And uh, to replicate, I go to my contact us page and I fill out the form. I press submit. And as the site owner, I would expect to receive an email with the content. Next one, layer slider WP. So this is just a slider plugin that we have on the home page and it shows our engagement photos. Um, I'll call it you know what, I would call it medium, but my wife would probably call it high, so we split difference, we'll call it medium. Um, or, uh, so medium, it's, uh, it's, it just, like I said, shows our engagement photos, and to replicate, I would go to the home page, and I would expect to see our engagement photos one by one sliding left. Uh, love it. Okay, this is definitely a low for me. Uh, this just literally adds like a, a, just like Facebook like it, it adds a love it button to any posts on the site, and people can love it. Uh, low, absolutely. And to replicate, I would go, I would go to a post, I would click the love it button, and I would expect the uh, number to increase by one. Uh, RSVP and wedding invitation. Okay, this is a high. This is the reason, this is one of the biggest reasons we built the site, was to take our RSVPs on, online, right? On our, on our invitations that we sent out, we said go to mesawedding.com and RSVP. Um, so this is a high, for sure. And I, to replicate it, um, I go to the RSVP page, I enter in the information, I press submit, and as the site owner, I would expect to receive an email with that, those details. Uh, Vantum push menu, that's just a navigation drawer for people that are on Android. Uh, like, you know, the navigation drawer comes out, push the hamburger, and it comes out. Um, I'm going to call that low. I don't really care if people on this, their cell phones can't use a navigation drawer to navigate around. I have links everywhere. Um, and to replicate it, I would go from a mobile device to my site and push the uh, hamburger and expect the drawer to come out to navigate. Uh, and then last but not least, WP Retina 2X. Like I said before, I'm going to consider that low. I do not care if my Uncle Gary cannot see my engagement photos in Retina. I was fat, anyway, so I, didn't want to, I don't want him to see them in Retina. Um, so yeah, that's a low. And to replicate, I just go to the home page, inspect one of the elements for any of the pictures, and I'll expect the element to uh, claim itself as red. All right, here we go. We just did it. it took like mm, six minutes. We just did my son. <coughs> awesome. So let's keep going. You're going to do the same thing with themes and custom functionality. This is going to be really fast because, one, you only have one theme that's active. So easy peasy. You're going to do that. That will take you two minutes. Um, and then custom functionality, not a lot of us build custom stuff into our sites, right? We rely on plugins and themes to do all that. So a lot of you actually won't have this. But I wanted to put it there for kind of thoroughness sake, just in case you have built some custom functionality, some custom widgets maybe. I don't know. Um, but you do the same thing. List them out. Rank them. Once again, be brutally honest. Place a few sentences. Provide the extract instru exact instructions. Boom. I, so I'm a personal believer that the theme should just do styling and not do functionality. So literally, I don't even have to do this for my site because the plugins do everything for my site. The theme does nothing but styling. That's, that's my plug for it. Don't have functions built in your theme. Um, step two. This is fun. This is where it gets real cool because this is where you become a real community member. Get to know your devs. So for the high criticality plugins and themes, Contact those devs. Reach out. Reach out to the, the dev themselves or their support teams. Let them know the specific functionality you're using. Tell them, hey, I'm Dustin Mesa. I entrusted your RSVP plugin to, for, to my wedding website. So the, you know, the most important day of me and my wife's life, we are trusting your plugin to deliver our RSVPs. And I want to thank you for building it. It's great. And then you open a dialogue around with that. 
is, is the RSVP functionality a core part of that plugin? Now, I know it is because it's called the RSVP plugin, but still, right? And so maybe you don't have to do it if it's like Gravity Forms and you're using a form. Well, you don't have to ask him. Is the form a core component of Gravity Forms? Um, what's the future of that functionality look like? So I like to ask him, are you still maintaining this code? Is it, you know, are you checking every Word, Word, WordPress version for compatibility? Um, are you adding new features? What, you know, what does that look like? And if I'm using something specific, like if I'm using Jetpack for pretty math, uh, I like to ask him, hey, how important is pretty math? Because Jetpack's got a lot of stuff. If, if pretty math broke, would you fix it? Or would you maybe just say, you know what? Uh, we didn't really care about that too much. We're going to stop it. So I can understand if something goes wrong, here's how much they care about that specific part of the plugin, right? So maybe they're like, oh, yeah, pretty math's the best thing we've ever done. It's the whole reason we're the automatic successful. So yeah, we're going to fix pretty math no matter what. Probably not the case. Um, and then talk to them about dev cycles. So how often do you guys you know, work on the plugin? Um, you know, do you test against betas? Do you test against the release candidates? Do you only test once the actual version's out? Um, understand what they do so that you can kind of set your expectations. You know, all right, well, if this plugin's incompatible, I know uh, I should probably wait until at least the release candidate because that's the, when they said that they test in dev. So yeah, you're going to make best friends with your dev. And devs love to have uh, customers that are uh, engaged. They love it when they care about their site, right? I'm, I'm telling you, if I built a plugin and someone emailed me and told me I trust the most critical part of my site to your plugin, that would make me feel great. That would make me feel wonderful. <clears throat> and then find at least one alternative. So go look. If you're running gravity forms, make sure, you know, list down contact form seven, right? If you go and find those, those other alternatives just in case. It's like a ripcord of, you know, who knows? Step three, this is really cool, get to know the future. So if you go to WordPress.org and click the blog button, they've done a great thing where they have sectioned all their blog posts into different categories. We care about the releases category. So go to the releases category and subscribe. RSS feed, whatever, send it to email, however you want to do it, whatever you like, um, but subscribe. You don't get much, you get like, I mean, uh, probably like five emails a quarter. Like it's not, you're not going to get bombarded. Um, and when, when they email you, they're going to email you every time a beta comes out, evaluate it. We're going to look at one in a minute, so I'll show you kind of how to evaluate it. But, but read through it. It's not long. It's not more than like a page. Um, and a lot of it's just fluff. Like, hey, WordPress is you know, getting better. Um, then if you see something that you think, ooh, that might, that might impact my high criticality plugin. Huh. You know what? I'm going to contact the devs and I'm going to ask them, hey, guys, I was reading the beta post. And I saw that, like, let's say you have a, a membership plugin with a custom login, and WordPress is going to change how passwords work. Ooh, well, those two are probably related. So you, I'd contact the devs and say, hey, guys, I was reading the beta post, and I, re I noticed that um, it looks like WordPress is changing the way passwords work. They're, they're changing the core functionality of passwords. Do you guys anticipate that changing how the custom login works? Have you guys tested it yet? Um, you know, just be very nice about it and ask them. Um, and hey, if they're great, they're going to come back and be like, oh, we've been working with WordPress on that. We have core contributed to that. So don't worry, it's going to be perfectly compatible. That would be an awesome scenario, right? Um, and then identify if any custom functionality may be impacted. So once again, a lot of us do not have custom stuff on our site. Um, and if so, if, if custom functionality you think is impacted, it might be a good idea to go test the beta release. And we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, but really, in the, the majority of people in this room, you will never have to test a beta. You will only test release candidates. Um, but yeah, if you have custom functionality, because that, that's us, right? We dev it, so it's ours to kind of own. Probably a good idea to test against the data. But now you have an idea of what's coming and how the site might be, might be impacted. So you might be like, you know what? No issues. None of this should impact me. I'm feeling good. No stress. No anxiety. Bring on the upgrades, right? Or maybe now you know, hey, this might impact WooCommerce. And I'm, I gotta, I'm waiting to hear back from Woo, so you know, I'm going to hold my horses on any upgrades, um, on any functional upgrades, until I hear back from Woo. But you know, now you know. <laughs> so here's what a beta post looks like. Um, they kind of bullet point the different things that are happening. So menus can now be managed with the customizer. Uh, take control of another piece of your site with the site icon. Uh, we put a lot of work into better passwords. We've also added editor improvements. And we've improved the list view across the admin dashboard. So they, they, they tell you what's going on, and don't worry, you don't have to test things like posting. Like, believe me, WordPress would never break how to post, right? It's, it's only custom stuff and plugins. 
Um, so here you go. Right? This is it's not a big email. They just kind of high level tell you what, what to expect. The more subscriber releases. And when a release candidate post is made, remember this is when WordPress says, all right, we think the code is good, and if nobody kind of screams, this is going to be what it is in two weeks. We're, we're doing it. So this is go time. Definitely contact the devs. Like, even if you didn't before, just shoot them a note and be like, hey, I saw a release candidate came out. How's the plugin looking compared to it, right? Even if you don't even think something's wrong, it's not a bad idea just to touch base, right? They like hearing from customers. Uh, if they say it's not, always ask, when can I expect an update? What does your development cycle look like? What, what is this? That will give you an idea of, if they're like, okay, well, we think that we'll have it done one week after the release is made. Cool, now you know, you're not pushing that button until at least a week out, right? That's cool, and we, we don't have to worry, because we know. Okay, now, you're gonna go and you're gonna create a staging site. Now for those of you, it's the best practice in the WordPress community, you should be using a WordPress managed host. All the good managed hosts have staging sites. One click, super easy. So create a staging site, it's an exact replica, it comes with all your plugins, all your themes. Install the WordPress Beta Tester plugin. Uh, it's right there in the repository. This, is the, this plugin is officially ma maintained by WordPress, and it's the way that you can get the new core code onto your staging site. It, whether it's a beta or a release candidate, whatever the latest kind of newest thing is, it'll install that as your core code. Here's what a release candidate post looks like. It's super simple. Um, they just say, hey, we think we're ready. Um, you know, beta 4 is done. We, you think, if you think you found a bug, do it here. To test it, look, they even give you a link to the WordPress the beta tester plugin. To test it, install the plugin, get ready to roll. Um, you know, there it is. They, they specifically call out developers. Please test your plugins and themes, right? So it's just there to kind of say to everybody, hey, we're here. We think we're, you know, ready to roll. So. Now it's time to test. You've created the staging site. You're all good to go. On your staging site, update all plugins and themes, but you shouldn't have to because you're already doing that, right? We're always, you know, every couple of weeks we're updating our site and our plugins and our themes. Um, execute the steps that you wrote down to re recreate the functionality you documented earlier. So I'm going to go to my contact us page, fill it out, expect to get an email. I'm going to do the RSVP form. I'm going to expect, the, you know, inspect the element to see right now. So run through that thing, right? Run through it, test it all out. Document it very carefully. If anything differs from what you expected, document that. Take a screenshot, document exactly what, what you pushed, what you entered, whatever it was, but document it very thoroughly because we're going to ask the devs later about it and we want to give them all the information that they need. So there you go, document it. Um, and then execute any backend functions that are unique to your site. So those are, once again, custom functionality. A lot of us will not have those. Document those too. So, hey, step four, it's go time. How are the results? If there's no issues, yeah, you can skip to step five. But what if there are? Let's dig in. So if the issue is with a medium or low criticality function, you have some options. So if it's medium or low, you can do nothing because we already admitted to ourselves the site still does what we expect it to do if this breaks. So if you really are strapped for time, Got to get create that new marketing presentation. Got to get that new you know update out for your for your customers. No problem. Skip it. Don't worry. You don't have to make that sacrifice because we're informed. We know this plugin doesn't matter to our site like our high ones do. And so I'm going to choose not to you know not to do anything. I'm going to let it break. Or you can contact the dev. You can contact them and say, hey man, notice it break. You know here's here's exactly what I did. You know, what are your thoughts? And you know, they might say, oh yeah, we're testing that, or oh yeah, we didn't know, thank you so much, you're the most engaged you know, owner of this plugin, awesome. Uh, you know, and see what they do, right? And maybe they're gonna upgrade, maybe they're gonna uh, make an update, but yeah, contact them and talk to them. Or you can replace it, you can build something, or you can just go find an alternative plugin. I mean, if there's one plugin, there's five for it, right? Um, so yeah, you can just real quick go try another one out, you know, up to you. So you've got some big options here if it's medium or low. But what if it's high? That, those, that's the call desk on the phone and cry time, right? No, no more crying. So if it's high, immediately contact that plugin dev. You've already got to report with them. They know that you're on top of things. So if they're smart, they've already tested it too because they're like, I don't want Dustin contacting me and being like, hey man, why is it broke? Um, figure out what they're going to do with the update. This right here is 
going to completely determine when you can upgrade. If they're like, yeah, it's not going to be for a month, or yeah, it's two days after release, or yep, we're going to do it a week before, right? That is what you know, and you, you've got great timing, you just know, all right, it's cool, I'm going to sit tight until then. You can replace it. You can build something, or we can pull that ripcord, right? If, especially if you hear nothing from the dev. If they go silent, right? Oh, boy, not good. Yeah, so we can pull the ripcord. We can switch plugins, right? That's why we did it. It's why we planned ahead, so that we don't have to have a oh shoot moment. We don't have to call Dustin crying. Instead, we should execute a backup plan. Here, this is, this, is, this is my way of showing you that devs care. I'm going to read this real quick. This happened after um, that security update I told you about that um, re removed functionality the one time. Well, there's a pretty big uh, kind of outcry. So this is from a developer. We're updating the views plugin today so that we resolve all short codes before passing to WordPress to process content. This is a straightforward change which takes us one day to complete. Would have been great to receive a heads up about an upcoming change in WordPress so we could do this change on time. We received a huge amount of support requests through this, but this isn't the issue. We can deal with a wave of support issues. This time it wasn't our fault, but sometimes it is. What worries us, as mentioned above, is seeing our clients, folks who build WordPress sites for a living, losing their faith in the system. They feel like the system sees them as little ants and not as humans. People don't like seeing their problems being dismissed. Remember, I came to that realization after talking about that. Many of them run hundreds of sites. They cannot afford to set up everything and fix content on so many sites, especially not if they are currently away from their family vacation. <coughs> Absolutely. I don't want any of you to have to do that. What others have asked here, and I would like to ask too, is to set up a mechanism that allows WordPress core developers to privately communicate such upcoming issues with plugin developers. We are your partners. This is a dev that cares. This is a dev that I want to risk the high criticality portions of my site to. This is somebody who I want to do business with. All right, step five. Now that we know, right, things got updated, we're, we've decided not to upgrade, like to just drop some plugins, whatever, right? We got to the end. We know what we're doing. Once all the issues have been resolved, you will have a much better understanding of your site. Think about how much you know my wedding website you've never even visited once. You haven't even seen the homepage, and you have an idea of everything it does and what I intended it to do, right? That's how good you're going to know your site. You're going to actually know it way better, which is important. You want to know your site. It's, it's, it's critical to your business. You won't fear the upgrade button. No more button anxiety, right? I love that. That makes me happy. If I could get rid of every anxiety in my life, that would be amazing, right? Um, you'll be ready for any maintenance or security upgrades that are released. No testing needed. You can just go ahead and hit that button. That's awesome. That's just gravy. That's just security or you know plug fixes. That's all good. And you'll have a game plan for the next functional upgrade. It won't be daunting. It won't be scary. You know what you got to do. You're going to have that relationship with your devs. It's going to get easy. Preparing for next time. If you documented everything you did, like I said. This process will take half the time in the future. It's going to be super quick. You're just, it's going to be old hat. You're just going to be like, oh, of course I test all my functionality when I upgrade WordPress. No, cool like that. Um, if you manage lots of sites, testing plans and communication devs get easier. Because usually you love a, a plugin that, you know, if you use Gravity Forms on every single one of your sites, and you have 100 sites, you still only have to contact them once and say, hey, man, what's going on with Gravity Forms? It's awesome. So, you know, by putting it into, into practice, best practices like, you know, utilizing similar code bases across your sites, you're making this even easier. Ensure you plan your time accordingly over the next quarter. Uh, you know, five minutes, probably four times to read the email. Uh, another probably 20 minutes to contact the devs. Uh, probably half an hour to do the testing. But hey, that's not bad. I mean, we're, you know, we're probably not even pushing over an hour yet. Um, you know, but plan it. Set it aside. It's well worth it. And sure enough, following this plan takes time but it also means a lot less surprises. Guys, for those of you who have kids, could you imagine if you could do something to make bad surprises from your kids stop? Wouldn't that be amazing? You don't ever have to hear, uh-oh, again. Like, getting rid of bad surprises is something that is very hard to do in our lives, but I've just given a way for you to do it for your site. And that's huge. I almost like bad surprises. Guys, I saw how important it was to the WordPress community to keep sites up to date. And that's why I championed it for WP Engine. But then I saw how important it was to give the community and our customers and you guys a way to do this efficiently and safely and easily. 
so that you can have a better quality of life. That's why I came here today. That's why I put this together. Thank you so much. Any questions? So I, um, so personally, I recommend that the actual codex, or just not the codex, the, the plugin repository, right? You do a simple search, and then you look at a few key things. This is how I evaluate plugins personally. I look at the star rating, right? That's somewhat important. We know, you know, anybody can be voting though. But I look at the star rating. Kind of like it to have above three. Um, I look at the last time it was updated, and I look at what WordPress versions is it known to be compatible with? Because sometimes it's like multiple versions behind. And it's like, hey, I don't want any of that because you're not maintaining your code, right? So I look at the stars, I look at um, when it was last updated and what version it's compatible with. And then, this is where I feel like I do this and not everybody does, I look at the support tab. There's a support tab on all the plugins in the repository. And what I look at is how fast did they respond when people had support? How much support are they getting? Are people asking the same thing over and over? Are people asking different things? Are people, you know, happy with the answers? I read a lot of those support threads to understand how invested is this development, developer or development team in this plugin. And so that's how I do it. Um, at first I did things like top 10 free, you know, WordPress plugins or whatever. Oh boy, that is not the right way to do it. Because once I would see those lists and then go to the plugin repository and give it my criteria, <whistles> nope, almost never passed. Um, so I'd stay away from kind of curated lists from just like, BuzzFeed and stuff like that. Like, you know, if you're looking at great, um, you know, WordPress development shops like TenUp, Oomph, um, you know, Zeek Interactive I really like, um, FlowPress, you know, there are, there are good shops that do this. They put this out, WebDev Studios, right? Um, they, I listen to them. I listen to the ones I respect. And I'll look at their curated list. But if it's some site I've never really heard of, I don't know. I, I don't give it the time of day. That's it. Time out. Time, it's a time out, guys. It's my time out. Thank you so much. Uh, everybody, give it a please, for her. Awesome. Um, awesome. If you have more questions, um, I'll be up here.